we've been doing this weekly and I think we're going to continue it for every week because it's very enjoyable to do. We're going to be redrafting the top 10 of the 2016 draft. Usual ru- rules, no mature age recruits, no rookie drafts. Um, obviously, when I mean redrafting the top 10, I mean you can you know pick someone from pick 70 and put them in the top 10. It's not rearranging the top 10. Um, to any smart asses out there, Tim English is born six months earlier than the age you're meant to be, but we're not counting that as mature age because he's basically the same age. So um, we'll let Rowie go with this one as he is a bit of a drafting guru and I made a fool of myself last week going first, so I'll protect myself here. Um, 2016 draft, mate, what's your top 10? Oh, well, the difficulty of this one, I might make a fool of myself here as well. Um I'll give out a few honourable mentions to the likes of Ollie Florent, Zach Fisher, Parfit, Jack Bowes, Jack Graham, Ben Ainsworth and Jai Simpkin. Um, they all came into consideration but didn't make the cut. Um, and number 10, I've got the father-son, Josh Dacos. Um, he's obviously got the surname that means he could be anything. Um, he's obviously shown a lot of promise and seems to kick a vital goal for Collingwood every week. I don't know, every time I watch the highlight, Dacos is always kicking one that keeps him in the game. Um, and number nine... Uh, Nick loves a lucky cock sesh larky. Um, I've got him in there, the tall forward for North. has obviously struggled for opportunities for them in the inside 50s, um, given the quality of, of football the North's displaying. But I reckon, you know, a few years' time, they're going to start to see a bit of development in their younger players. He's going to get more opportunities, and Larky's only going to get better, and he's going to get more support. Um, like we said, Hamish, is, he could do with a bloke called Ben Brown supporting him in the forward line, but unfortunately, he will tap. He'll... Um, he'll um, get the number one tall defender every week. So it's going to be hard for him to progress at the moment. But um, as we've said before, it's so hard to get quality tall forwards, and he's certainly one of them, especially as a youngster. So number eight, Jared Berry. We've seen what he can do. He's shown a lot of promise, and he's had some serious games, some serious breakout games where he's just, you know, he's just almost like a, a step ahead of everyone. But he's very injury prone, and you know, um, form is questionable at times. So I've got him in at eight. He's a goal-kicking mid, but um, I just want to see him get a full season, especially in the midfield for the Lions, because he he really could be anything. He could be an absolutely awesome player, or he could be one of those players that sort of dissipates in terms of their form and ability. Number seven, Harry Perryman, been very underrated for JWS. Um, You know, if he was playing for a Victorian team, you know, he'd be have a lot more spotlight shown on him, but he's been very good for GWS when he's played for them. Obviously, he's had an interrupted season this year, but I still back him in. He's just come back and he seems to play every time he plays well, GWS play well. So um, whether you read it much into that, I don't know. But at number six, we've got the elderly man we've just mentioned, Tim English, um, who's obviously... a Huge for the dogs. Uh, I know he's not the strongest tap ruckman, but gets around the ground and really helps out their structure, especially when he's up forward. Um, Could obviously show he can take a few clunks and he'll give Norton and Bruce or himself a third tall defender. Um, And that's all you need to secure yourself a defendable score for the game. Number five. Now, this is where it might get controversial. And number five, I've actually got the number one pick in Andy McGrath, which I know is controversial, but he's been good. His scoreboard impact for uh, a midfielder that we all expect to become elite isn't terrific, isn't ideal at the moment. Um, believe me, I think he'll you can lock him in as a 200, 250 plus game player. Um, but at the, the moment, I want to see a bit more damaging. Let's let's create a word here: damagingness. Um, from Andy McGrath. Um, I think he's a bit too one-dimensional at the moment, but I think he will obviously improve on that in his career to come. Shea Bolton at number four. Um, I think Friday night's game made him jump up in my rankings. He was absolutely awesome and shows that he is a goal-kicking mid with X-Factor qualities and um, it's a player that every team needs. And he's been awesome. I'm so gutted that we overlooked him because we were linked to him all up leading up sorry leading up to the draft and we ended up taking Ben Long. So anyway, I'll leave that there. Um pick three, Jordan Ridley. 
you know, and I've said super coach God and is an elite defender now. Um, has had a breakout season last year and he's just having another stellar season this year, barring the concussion for my super coach team and probably everyone else's. Um, but he's in at number three and I can't wait to see how he continues to play. Um, he's very exciting. And number two is questionable. I've got Tim Tirano because his disposal efficiency, especially by foot, isn't fantastic. But we saw what he could do in his first few years, especially in that grand final year for GWS. He was the best player on the ground in the grand final and shows he's not afraid of a big performance and a big atmosphere. And I think obviously last year was sort of hurt by injuries, but he's you know arguably their best player when he's fit, um, especially through our midfield. Um, so if he can fix up his kicking, which is obviously hard to do, but it could be absolutely something else. But at number one, Hugh McCluggage, this is one of the smoothest movers in the AFL and is mm-hmm. quite the opposite of Andy McGrath. He's very much more than one dimensional. You know, he can play inside, outside, got great burst of speed and has an awesome scoreboard impact um, as well as a much more exciting last name to yell out in the dying seconds of a game. So, um, I'm definitely going to have him a in there. I'm, he's definitely a player I'd love to see at St Kilda, given just his poise and composure for use. But um, unfortunately, the Lions have got him, and he's just only going to get better. Um, I actually, so he's up there in the in the um, Brownlow um, at the moment. I actually think he might have been second in the predictor, which just made me think he's only getting it better. Therefore, you know, he could be a chance for Brownlow in his years to come. And with that being said, I've definitely locked him in as my number one pick from that draft. Yeah, some very interesting calls there. I, I actually have a pretty similar list to you there. Uh, sadly, had to omit some of my favourites that you just mentioned there, which hurts. But uh, before I get into mine, Pilch, I want to hear your 10, mate. Yep, so mine is also pretty similar. Um, I tried to fit in the Power Peppers, Todd Marshalls, Willem Drews of the world, but they just aren't in the top 10. So I'll avoid the abuse from you two there. Um, in at number 10, I've got Josh Dacos. He is just a freak, huge, huge talent. Um, to be honest, a lot of these blokes are pretty similar in level and potential. It's actually a bit of a tough job, but... um. Number nine, Tim English. Number eight, I've put in Jai Simkin. Uh, I think it's Simkin butchers the pill as you've as you've experienced firsthand, Hamish, by having him in your super coach team. But I think he's quite dogged compared to a lot of these names because he plays for North. Um, I think if you put him in, say, even a Collingwood, then he would be a far better player. You can tell he's got a huge amount of potential and talent. Uh, number seven, just because he's a key forward with big potential, Nick Larkey. Number six, Jared Berry. I actually really rate Berry. He, um, he had some huge games and he's going to be a god. Number five, I've dogged Rowie's man, but Taranto in at number five, just because he absolutely murders the pill um, in every single game he plays. He's always 200 dream team, 60 super coach. So... You just know something's not quite right. I don't know whether it's his decision making or just his kicking sucks, but um, yeah, number four, Shy Bolton. Taranto's probably a better player, but Bolton's won a won a flag and he's just an absolute freak. Um, number three, Jordan Ridley. Number two, McGrath. And number one, definitely Hugh McCluggage, without question, in my opinion. Um, agree with you there. All right. A lot of honourable mentions here. I'm probably not going to go through them all. Honourable mention to anyone I miss out who you two have said. There's been a few names that I've gone like, oh, yeah, they were stiff, like Jared Berry and Perryman. Uh, also, shout out to Jack Bowes. I don't think, don't know if we've mentioned him yet, but he's found his role of halfback. He looks good. Isaac Cumming, exact same boat. Um, and I've left out Josh Dacos, uh, which is pretty controversial, but, yeah, I've done that. Oh, by the way, before I get into my list, uh, Rhett was not happy with you, um, Rosef, putting Davies Uniac ahead of Stevenson last week. He, he was pretty. He, he sent me a message about two uh, two hours after it went up, 
he's not happy. I think he played cricket with Stephenson as a child, so it might be a little bit of bias there, but um, yeah. I thought I'd let you know that, but um, didn't have anything to say about me leaving Cam Rainer oh, out, which is interesting. But um, all right, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, number ten, I'm going Ollie Florent. Hasn't really fully reached his potential, I'd say, just yet. Um, it's been tested in a few spots, but he's starting to find his spot in that Sydney Swans outfit. A uh, very classy individual. Number nine, I'm going Jai Simpkin. Last year, he was right up there in the north BNF for me in my voting. And exactly, echo exactly what Pilch just said. Uh, brilliant ball winner, loves a clearance, just can't use it at all and plays for a shite team. So uh, I feel bad for him, but yeah, he needs to work on his disposal efficiency if he wants to get into a more elite echelon of the game. Number eight, I don't think he's been mentioned yet, but Jack Graham, I'm actually a really big fan of this guy. Uh, I think he gets overlooked because of Richmond, how many stars they've got. But him and Shy Bolton equally are more than, I think Shy Bolton's a better player, but I think they both are two of the more underrated players in that side. He's really good ball winner, uh, really um, like inside gritty player, doesn't get uh, much glory, but I like him and he's one flag, so good on him. Number seven, debatably too low, but Shy Bolton, um, when he came into the league, I think I had him as super coach and he was like a forward pocket, touched the ball like five times. I think could be wrong, but um, maybe him and like Tyson Stengel or something came in at a similar time and there was blokes like Rioli and I thought he was just another one of those guys, didn't see much footy, kicked a goal every now and then, but he has gone on leaps and bounds. One of the most impactful ball users in the league, I'd say. He's just so good. Number six, once again, I don't think either of you have had this guy. Big fan of him personally, but I've gone with Brandon Parfit. Uh, probably just he, most famous for just being pronounced as Parfit by BT. But um, uh, doing my votes for two years now, I've seen that statistically he's a very impressive player. Holds his own in a stacked Geelong midfield pressure and tackling machine. Uh, so him and Cam Guthrie, I think they're... Cam Guthrie is getting more plaudits now, but I think they've been overlooked in that midfield for the last couple of seasons, and um, Parfit deserves his plaudits as well. Five, I've gone Taranto, exact same as you, Pilch. Just think, um, I, I think he hasn't reached his ceiling just yet, but I think similar to like a Warpool, I think he's better than James Warpool, even though I had Warpool pretty high last week, but I don't know. He, he reached a very good level very quickly, and I'm not sure if he's got that much left to go if you know what I mean where some of the players above I think have better high ceilings and he needs to work on his disposal efficiency but he you know he has um, similar traits to some of the guns in the comp like Dusty Martin uh, which is always good uh, number four I'm going Jordan Ridley currently se- he last year he came second in my Essendon BNF and he's currently winning my Brownlow um, and he's missed two weeks so that basically says it all uh, number three, I've gone with Timmy English, uh, right up there in my dogs BNF last year, which is very interesting given the amount of beasts they have. But uh, obviously, you guys had Nick Larkey in there, same sort of principle. You know, the taller guys take a longer time to develop. Um, not sold on his rucking ability yet, but he is only in his fourth year, I think it is, for these guys. Um, maybe fifth, I'm not actually sure, but he's proven yeah, to be fifth. a fairly decent forward as well. Okay, fifth. Um, number two, I've gone with Andy McGrath. I, I do get what Rowie means. Um, not very impactful with his touches, but I don't know. I, I think I'm a bit polar, not polarized. That's not the right word, but, um, I'm under a sort of spell with Andy McGrath. I saw him kick four goals in one quarter once in school footy. And after that, I think I've, you know, just, uh, I just appreciate him a lot more. Um, but yeah, sure. I, I get your <laughs> call, Rowie. And yeah, a hundred percent agree with both you. Hugh McCluggage. Is probably the only player I would comfortably say is elite out of this bunch. There's very good players in there, but I think he's a class above. Uh, his inside, fi- he's probably one of the best. Like if you had to pick a player to have an inside fifty chance, um, like he's just going to hit a forward on the tit. Like some of his Houston. ball use. Oh, Houston! He's just going to bang it eighty meters though. Um, <laughs> but nah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, some of McCluggins forward fifty entries. Yeah, some of McCluggage forward 50 entries in the Carlton game were just silly. Um, so he's an absolute gun and deserves number one spot. 
Uh, so, yeah, interesting calls for me there. I don't think you guys have Parfit or Graham, but we'll get Rhett's um, feedback shortly, I'm sure. Um, but that's actually a really good draft. A lot of depth. I know we were talking about this before we came on air. They have played more years than the ones we've done previously, but uh, they, as Pilch said, there's a lot of players at a very similar level there. And it's going to be interesting to see who takes the next step into the superstar status of the competition. It's a miracle! Oh, yeah! Cheers, here's Siddle, 